we welcome you to Fairview United Methodist Church Library um, as we once again practice distance worship um, here on this um, third Sunday of Pentecost. It's good to see everyone. Even though it's from a distance, it's good to be together. We thank you for joining us and we just uh, hope you'll continue to do so. Um, I want to thank William again for uh, coming to uh, record and, and I, I want to thank Parks and Evelyn for the beautiful music that they always supply. And I want to thank you for uh, joining us. Let's begin with prayer. O oh God, our heavenly creator, we thank you for your word and for those eternal truths that guide us day by day. We thank you for the living word, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and for the deep assurance that Jesus is here, present with us. Teach us in our time together to turn unto you so your thoughts may be our thoughts and your ways may become our ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of this household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing is secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fail to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Today's gospel lesson is like the tail end of a commencement speech of sorts, you might say. Jesus prepares his 12 closest followers for their first mission apart from him. They are to demonstrate what God's kingdom looks like, interrupting life as they knew it with new possibilities New possibilities of, for healing, for wholeness, for truth-telling, and for repaired relationships. Earlier in the chapter, Jesus empowered them to do things that Jesus does. Cast out demons, 
heal people with every kind of sickness, teach about God's ways. It's a small miracle that Jesus trusts them with such spiritual authority, so early in their understanding of who he really is. This miracle of Jesus' confidence in his 12 uh, bumbling, blundering disciples offers us hope also. You can imagine Jesus on the edge of sending his 12 naive disciples forward when he pauses to equip them with a final spiritual message and with final spiritual gifts. This final spiritual gift of the ability to persevere in the face of resistance. Jesus never sugarcoats anything. He doesn't sugarcoat the dangers of the mission. He gives it to them straight. Some folks will welcome the good news. Others won't. They'll resist the message and change that comes with it. And you'll be the target of their resistance. Then like a, a good leader, he reminds them that our Heavenly Father is both incredibly powerful, pronouncing judgments that yield life or death, and incredibly tender, noticing every sparrow that falls and counting every hair on our heads. By remembering the character and faithfulness of God, the disciples have what they need in order to endure beyond their fear of rejection and violence. Now Jesus' speech before sending his disciples forward is only one moment of what has been a lifelong process. Even before Jesus was with them, formation was taking place in their lives and character formation was taking place. One moment in their learning process is what it means to follow Jesus. Jesus shows the twelve who they truly are, children of God. Jesus shows the twelve what they are capable of doing when they align with God's grace. They're capable of healing others, reconciling communities. He teaches them how to hold on to that truth, even when the going gets tough. He tells them to remember God's character, God's faithfulness, God's goodness. Took years of hanging on uh, there with Jesus, hanging out in the uh, presence of Jesus, eating with him, watching him heal others, speaking truth to power, listening to his teachings, and overhearing his prayers for them to become those who were willing to lose their lives as martyrs, testifying to God's peace in a world still mesmerized by powers and principalities. Christian identity and Christian formation, character formation, are long processes that take a lifetime. One of the most troubling things about this passage to our ears is Jesus talking about division within the family. The peace that Jesus brings causes division. This is not forever, but for now. In this in-between time, when values of the old self, which Paul discusses in Galatians, still have power. And we all have an old self. We all have an old self. Our sinful, fear-filled, greedy, prideful nature that we try to leave behind and is left behind as it is crucified with Jesus on the cross. When we are reborn, 
freed from sin into a new life. Now that doesn't mean that the old self does not try to pull us back and pulls us uh, back down now and then. It does. And it can pull our loved ones down too. As Jesus equipped the first disciples long ago, so today he equips us with the power of the Holy Spirit to confront the death-dealing ways of the old self and participate in Christ's triumph over them. Now by our baptisms, we find a new dimension, a new dimension of family in the church, the family of God. There we learn Sunday by Sunday about forgiveness. We learn about what it means to be released from those things that enslave us. This allows us to move forth joyfully into God's future. By hearing the scripture week by week, day by day, the Spirit equips us with the knowledge of God's character. Both the Almighty Maker of heaven and earth and the merciful Lord who watches over every sparrow. So in this we become, we come to know God as the Almighty and God as the gentle. God's grace is bigger, much bigger than anything we can ever imagine. God's faithfulness is worked out in ways we can't anticipate. And over the lifelong process of becoming a disciple, we learn to trust God. Like the disciples, we are sometimes sent out on risky missions, warned and equipped to face danger. Other times, we are cast out into the wilderness without any choice. But even there, we discover God's grace goes before us. God's grace goes before us. We learn to respond to division. We learn to respond to harassment. We learn to respond, respond to even estrangement with greater patience, with confidence, trusting that in the long game, in the end time, and often before, God's mission of reconciliation of the old self and the new self will be accomplished. God's purposes are always accomplished. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Now as you go from here, know that God is able. God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that you may always have enough of everything and may provide in abundance for every good work. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.